together in my name, I will be there. So if I can oh. Good morning, sisters. <laughs> Just looking around here. See, young man, if you ever thought about a situation where it's you, you gotta take care of <laughs> Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come this morning to study another portion of your word. As we go forward, we ask that you continue to keep those safe that are on the way to the building. We pray that as we go forward, everything we do will be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. Forgive us all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're in the new books. And we're starting on page 10. I think Brother Martin started with this last week. And... Uh, we're going to do some reading, and y'all are going to explain to me this morning <laughs> what we're talking about. Okay, on page 10, the God the Father, and it's starting at uh, Jeremiah, and the lesson starts at, so they shall come with weeping and with supplication. I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of the water in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Fathers. A father guides his children. A father is supposed to support his family. A father is supposed to go hungry so everybody else can eat if that's, that's what's needed. So the scripture is putting this in a way that we as normal people can understand it. I've got three questions. Who had that father that was wonderful? Raise your hand. Who had that father that you couldn't get, wait to get 18 to get out of the house? Raise your hand. Now, who had that father that was all of the above? <laughs> when we think about the family, God always put the Father in charge. He also put that help me over there. And we understand that it's a team thing. But fathers are responsible for our situations. We want to thank all the mothers, all the sisters, aunts, because without y'all, we would really be in trouble for helping us out. But the scripture is putting this in a way, family way. Putting that, they shall come with weeping and supplication, and I will lead them, leading. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way which they shall not stumble. Holding up holding up each and every one okay now I just started this but uh, I see our preacher came in and I'm sure he has a different take on what I was doing <laughs> so I'm gonna give him about five more minutes to get himself together I'm also on page 10 Hosea says when Israel was a child I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son it's a different when a father calls somebody else's kid. But when he say, I call my son. See, I do a lot of stuff for my son 
that I won't do for other folks son. Now, when, when my son needs some new tennis, he may get some joys. Oh, that's my boy. When your son needs some tennis, he may get some kids, sketches, whatever. <laughs> you, it, we ain't going to join, okay? But my son, that's, that's giving ownership to the family. That's giving ownership, God's giving ownership to the church. And when he gives ownership, you know, you give the best that you can get when you give ownership for your own folks. Okay. One more verse here. It says, as they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed to Baal and burned incense to craven images. I taught Ephraim to walk, talking them by the arms, but they did not know that I healed them. Even in troubled times, when we don't know what God is doing, he's working his way on our behalf. Sometimes we say, well, why am I going through this? Why am I late today? Well, that helped you from getting in a wreck up on 20. Why won't my car start today? Because you didn't need to go somewhere. You were already too tired. No matter what's going on, God is working his plan. And we just have to understand, we don't always know, we don't always see. But he's still in control. Okay. Now I see our minister's ready to go. Come on. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Pastor Nolly. Hey, every now and again, it's good to hear from the pastors, hear, to get, hear from the shepherd, one of the shepherds of, of the church. Just appreciate him. I don't know what was going on on 45, but thankfully we are here. Um, Y'all doing all right? All right, I'm just going to get a good gander at you guys. All right, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, God as the Father, God as the Father, and I'll just pick up right where Brother Nolly uh, left off. Uh, last week we looked at God as the Creator, we looked at His involvement in creation, and I wanted to go a little deeper last week, but the material was just a, a bit too, I, I don't know what to call it, but there's a whole lot of information that you probably just wouldn't want to digest in terms of the existence of God and so forth. Uh, that's, that's where our true fight is with atheists and postmodernists and so forth. Uh, but we want to look at God as the Father, and I'm sure you've read the Jeremiah passage, chapter 31, verse 9, Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, Luke, chapter 2, 46 through 50, uh, John chapter 11, 41 and uh, 42, and then Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 6 through 15. And for the sake of time, we want to look at just uh, a couple of, of passages, uh, and if y'all don't mind uh, journeying to the New Testament, we're going to look at a couple of these passages. Luke chapter 2, 46 through 50, John chapter 11, 41 and 42, and Matthew chapter 6, verses 6 through 15. When we look at the term Father uh, in the scriptures, it, it describes an intimate relationship. It describes uh, the source of our blessings. When we look at uh, God as Father, uh, it brings him just a little closer to us. Uh, some look at God as some powerful force. Some see him as uh, someone that is disconnected from his creation because he is so far away and so far above uh, the earth that he really can't relate to us. But when we see God as father, it's, it's an intimate relationship, particularly for those who may have lost earthly fathers for those whose earthly fathers 
may have not been the best fathers. They were absentees uh, in the lives of their children. But when we look at God as father, uh, as he deals with Israel in the Old Testament, as he deals with his people in the New Testament, we should gain some sense of appreciation and I'll even say celebration that we have a father such as God. And so in Luke chapter 2, 46 through 50, uh, now so it was after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to him, son why have you done this to us? Look your father and I have sought you anxiously. Uh, the Bible goes on to say, and he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. This is one of my favorite passages in the New Testament. I often take this text, Luke chapter 2, 41 through 45, when I preach gospel meetings, uh, and I entitle the sermon, Let's Go Back to Jerusalem. Well, that's a good one. Y'all got to hear that one day. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, Jerusalem. That's when they went to celebrate the feast and Jesus stayed behind. And they went three days not knowing that Jesus was not with them. And so you can just imagine the commotion, the confusion, the fear, as the text says, the anxiety in looking for Jesus. And when they find him, Mary said, in our everyday language, boy, don't you know your father and I were anxious? We were worried about you. For one, Joseph wasn't his biological father. <laughs> that's, that's one thing. But the other point is Jesus' response to her is what, what should give us cause to pause. He says, did you not know that I must be about my father's? Business. He's in there, he's explaining the law, he's asking questions that folk can't explain, he's answering questions that people thought he could not answer, and so they're astonished at his understanding of the law, and so he's already carrying out his father's business. Now Jesus has what is called a dual nature. He's 100% God and 100% man. And so when Jesus refers to his father as heavenly father, he is showing the distinction between he and God. Well, last week we looked at uh, part of the Godhead, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There are many who say that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, which is not what the Bible teaches. There is a distinction, and in Luke chapter 2, Jesus shows this distinction by saying, I must be about my father's business. How wonderful would it be if every child of God said what Jesus said on a daily basis? I must be about my father's business. Now, we got our own business. Say man, stay in the church. <laughs> we got our own business and, and sometimes uh, our business can get in the way of doing God's business. When we look at the, the life of Jesus, uh, here's a, a scripture you can jot down. Luke chapter 22, verse number 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 22, where the Bible says, The Son of Man goeth even as it was determined of him. That means that every step Jesus took while on earth, he was walking in his father's business. He was doing his father's business. There never was a time in the life of Jesus, in all 33 years of his life on earth, there never was a time when he wasn't involved in doing the father's business. And so when he says to Mary, don't you know that I need to be about my father's business? And so he does two things. Number one, you didn't need to worry. Number two, you need to look at my life as an example of what you should be about on a daily basis. A, a daily basis, somebody needs to hear about Jesus. On a daily basis, somebody needs to be prayed for. On a daily basis, somebody needs to be encouraged because in doing so, we are about our 
father's business. All right. And so Jesus says, listen, look at my life, mirror my life, because guess what? My father is your, your father. Just think about that for a second. Even going back to uh, Hosea's account and Jeremiah's account in the Old Testament and all Old Testament references uh, that have God as, as father, the same God who did all of the creation that we talked about last week is our father. How does that make you feel? And when you think about everything that he has done for you, there's a song that says, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> so Jesus is saying, I, I, I must be, there's no option to it. I must be about my father's business. One other point before we move on, uh, on last week uh, in the sermon, we looked at Haggai uh, chapter two, who was left among you that saw this house in her first glory. And how do you see it now? We talked about how they were discouraged. They stopped building for 16 years. One of the things I did not cover in chapter 1 of Haggai, after they began doing the, the rebuilding of the temple and stopped, they started taking care of their own houses, doing their own things. And so God says, listen, when you get money, you're going to put money in a purse or a bag that has holes in it. He says, because you are neglecting me, I'm going to make sure that you don't prosper in doing what you're doing until you get your mind right and start being about my. Woo, man. I should have preached that last week. Huh? <laughs> Boy, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff. So now, in, in Luke chapter 2, he wants them to understand the importance of being about the father's business. And you need to uh, just think about that uh, each day. Be intentional with your day. Uh, make it a great day on purpose by being about the father's business. And then John chapter 11. This is, this is something that's very, very powerful. We know the story of Lazarus. But notice now how Jesus uses the Father, God the Father in the context of Lazarus's resurrection. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I'm going to read that again. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Oh, man. We could spend the rest of class just dealing with this, but we're going to just hit a couple of points. Uh, of course, Lazarus is dead. Jesus goes to the tomb. He's just told them to roll away the stone. Uh, and then Jesus begins to pray. All right. He begins to pray. Notice now what he prays. Notice the confidence in his prayer life. Because even when we pray to our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name, we need to possess the same kind of confidence. Notice the words, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. <laughs> I thank you that you have heard me. How many of you, when you pray to God, when you drop to your knees, when you bow your head, when you close your eyes, or even when you lift your head to heaven, even when you lift your hands to heaven, as you look up to heaven, praying to God, how many of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God hears you? That's a powerful thing to know, to know that he, that that ought to be enough to get you through the day. Even though the response, the answer has not materialized in your life, even though you don't see proof of the blessing that you're requesting of God, the fact that you know he hears you ought to be enough because you know that he's going to respond in his own way, in his own time. But Jesus is saying this because he wants folk to believe that God the Father had sent him. He's, he's my father, he, he hears prayers and he answers prayers. 
I, I heard when I walked in, Brother Nolly talked about buying his children Jordans and other people's kids shoes they ain't got no name brands. <laughs> he said, that's because look, they, they my children and I take care of my, my children. When you have this relationship with God, it's an awesome thing to know. James says it this way, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and comes down, here's the word again, from the Father of lights with whom is no variable this neither shadow of of turning when jesus is teaching uh, his disciples about prayer in matthew chapter 7 we know ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you he then goes and says listen the father knows how to give good gifts to his children and so jesus once again is is, is is setting a standard he's setting an example not only that you must be about the father's business in terms of teaching and helping people understand the word just a little better but even in your personal private prayer life you need to know how the father functions understand the power of your relationship with your heavenly father if if god can raise a man who's been dead for four days which was an impossibility in the minds of those who were there what can't god do in your life here's another scripture job chapter 42 verse number one where the bible says job says god you can do everything all right that's job chapter 2 verse 42 uh, and verse number one and so we see different different functions of the father and how who he is plays a significant role in our everyday lives any any questions any, any questions all, all minds clear and so in Luke 2 I must be about my father's business John 11 I, I pray to the father and the father hears me always another scripture you can jot down just for future study is 1st John chapter 5 verses 14 through 15 if ever if ever if ever you want God to answer your prayer favorably 100% of the time Pray to him what he has already said in his word. I'm going to let you chew on that just for a second. <laughs> when you pray back to God what he has already said in his word, what he has said to his people, then because of who God is, because he does not lie, I know I'm going to receive from him what he said he's going to give to me. And so I'm just going to pray back to him what he's already said. Mm, okay. We're going to unpack that when we do a study on prayer. Uh, Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Uh, but you, when you pray, and this is, and we're going to cover this uh, during the, the, the Bible class, the power of kingdom living, because I want to uh, unpack some things, particularly when it comes to, to prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Uh, the, these are, particularly fasting is something that's not often talked about uh, in the church, and people just see it as, you know, staying away from your Cheetos for a few hours. And that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's a deeper significance to, to fasting, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge, Lord's willing, when we come to it. Uh, but let me just read this uh, briefly. Jesus says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, what Jesus is doing, just, just to get the context, Jesus is aware of how the Pharisees carry themselves. When the Pharisees pray, they pray in public. They pray these long, repetitive prayers because they want those who see them and hear them 
to believe that they are the super elite. These are the super church folk. There's nobody on the level of the Pharisees because we can see what they're doing. We see them giving. We see them praying. We see them fasting. So, you know, these Pharisees are on another level spiritually. But then Jesus shuts all of that down. He says, when you pray, don't do it out in public. Go into your private place. Go into your war room. How many of you got a war room in your house? Go, go, go into your war room. Go into your prayer closet. Go into your secret place and pray to God secretly. And the God that sees you praying secretly will bless you openly. Is this making sense? So now, once again, understanding the relationship that we have with our Father when we pray to Him, that means you got to have a private relationship with Him. You can't have a Sunday-only relationship with Him where you want folk to know you have a relationship because you're singing the loudest. <laughs> you got to have a private relationship with Him. When you have a private relationship with Him, then your heavenly father will bless you openly. Look at David. Who was around when David killed the lion and the bear? Who was around when he killed Goliath? Everybody, right? <laughs> when you have this intimate relationship with God, your father privately, God will bless you publicly. That's just the God that we, we serve. All right. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions like the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. You know, a lot of folk are loquacious. That's an SAT word. Use many, many, many words. And they're really just saying the same thing over and over and over again. And they think they're going to be heard because they use many words. Uh, therefore, do not be like them, Jesus says, for your father knows that you, things you have need of before you ask him. God knows you so well that before you utter your need in prayer, he already knows it. But here's a question. If God already knows what we need, if our father knows what we need, why is it then necessary for us to communicate that need to him? Any thoughts? He already knows, right? He's, he's omniscient. He, he knows everything. There's, there's nothing he doesn't know because he knows everything. So if he knows what I need, then why does he need to hear from me if he already knows what I need? Or to show that we have a relationship with him. To, just to hear from us. Parents know their kids, right? It was, I told you, it was, it, it was eight of us walking around that house and before we said anything, it's almost as if there was something that clicked in my mother and father's mind and they knew what we were about to ask. Sometimes I would go up there and they'd be like this, no. But, but, but you didn't know. No. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so he, God loves to hear from us because hearing from us is a testament to our understanding of God as being the source of our blessings right and so when he hears from us when we go to him and, and we say dear, dear heavenly father dear righteous father he is like, man, they, they, they're coming to me. They're, they're not trying to do their own thing. They're not trying to, to seek answers from other places. They're coming to, to me. Oh, man. That's the richness of the prayer life of Christians. Christians for Christians, prayer is a, a privilege. It's a privilege that we have. It's a privilege that's not often utilized or taken advantage of in the Lord's church. I, it's my prayer that we here become a praying church and we pray about everything to our Heavenly Father. Before we do anything, we pray about everything. All right, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? 
He goes on in verse 8. Therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask them. He says in verse 9 uh, through 12, and this is the model prayer. This is often called the Lord's Prayer, but it's Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. In this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then 14 and 15, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Man, that's, 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 that's something else. Let's, let's just dive in there just, just a little bit. We're going to just put our spiritual toes uh, in, in the water. There's a lot of power, first of all, in the model prayer that Jesus gives when he identifies, hey, when you pray, you pray addressing God as your father, the source of your blessings. Understand first and foremost where your blessings come from. Uh, and then Jesus begins talking about give us this day our our daily bread and I'm going to unpack that uh, on Wednesday night let me just drop this uh, real quick while we got just a couple of moments what I would like to do because it's going to take forever to deal with the power of kingdom living each Wednesday so here's a here's a thought what if I did the Wednesday but also maybe Thursday and Friday did a recording same time frame covering more information how many of you will go back Thursday and Friday and watch it on YouTube yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if I put in that extra work y'all gonna, gonna say okay I, I, I'll get some Jesus on Thursday I, I'll get some Jesus on Friday it, it won't be long the same time frame but there's just too much to unpack to try to unpack uh, on a, a, a Wednesday night and so I want to try to get as much in so you guys will be willing to you know I can go back and see the views right <laughs> yeah 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 I do know that right <laughs> uh, so so that's that's just a thought I may I may do that because there's just so much information uh, that we need and I don't want to say okay you I, I can't wait to touch this in 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 December you know, where you can get that a lot sooner than, than December. Any, any questions, thoughts? All right. Uh, let's just move on real, real quickly. So that's the model, the model prayer. But we're going to un unpack that. Uh, but just 14 and 15, just in the area of forgiveness, he says, if you forgive men their trespasses, when they go beyond the boundaries that you have set, when they offend you, when they sin against you, when you forgive them, then your father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Here's the thing. Never expect anything from God that you are unwilling to give to your, your fellow man. That's something that is difficult for folk to digest, to stomach. It, it just don't taste right. Because the degree of the offense is so great that it's going to take some time for me to muster up enough faith, enough love, enough Jesus. There's a song that says, I need just a little more Jesus. <laughs> In the area of forgiveness, that may be somebody's uh, plea, that may be somebody's testimony. I need just a little more Jesus when it comes to forgiveness. But when Jesus says, listen, if you fail to forgive men, then you will not be forgiven of your trespasses and you don't want to die in that state having not been forgiven by your father because your father wants to forgive you he wants the relationship to be restored to be reconciled to uh to to be tight that's that's the type of relationship that god desires all right and so and that's this really just the the introduction uh what i've done was just uh and let me, let me rephrase that. What Brother Nolly and I have done and tag team in this lesson is just put it in capsule form <laughs> so you can 
digest it just a little better but go back you know look at the lesson because there's a lot of great information in the lesson but we want to appreciate God for who he is as our father the source of our blessings one who desires an intimate relationship with us one who desires us to be about his business and for us to turn to him in our time of need because he is a blesser he is a forgiver he gives good gifts unto us I'm thankful and even when we go just a little deeper and we won't at this time I'll just mention when we cry Abba father which is Aramaic which really speaks to a very very intimate relationship with God there are some kids who know the men who have brought them into this world or responsible for them being in this world as father but not dad you see it on TV all the time father it just seems so cold a cold relationship but when you're able to say hey 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 dad which describes the closeness the intimate relationship that's what God desires of us he doesn't want us just to see him as some aloof distant creator of the ends of the earth he wants us to see us see him rather as our heavenly father who wants the best for you and I even if the best involves discipline just read Hebrews chapter 12 because God chastises those whom he loves that's what fathers do right I remember hearing for the first time I'm only doing this because I love you I told my parents well, I need y'all to hate me because this love hurts <laughs> this love is painful right uh, but that's what God does. He chastises those. He chastens those whom he loves. That's what a, a, a great parent does. The Bible says, he that spareth the rod hateth his son. Right? Well, that was a loud amen right there. Now you can call him. You see, that's why I put the belt on you. That's why I put that switch on you. Because I love you. <laughs> if I didn't, I, I hate you. <laughs> But we ought to thank God for what he does. We ought to thank God for just being, being who he is. We want to go ahead and, and wrap up uh, so you guys can get some, some donuts and some, some juice and get, get ready for our worship service on today. So if you would, please bow with me in a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you so much for, for hearing your children. Dear Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us dear father to to hear your word to study your word to learn more of you we pray dear father that this knowledge of you will translate into obedience on our part help us dear father to be about your business help us to depend on you uh, when we are faced with life's challenges help us to see you dear father for who you are as our father and I pray, dear Father, that we will walk in such a way that glory and honor will be brought to your name. That people will celebrate you because of what they see in us. We pray, dear Father, that you will just be pleased with us, dear Father, as you were with your son, Jesus. I pray now, dear Father, that as we depart from uh, this portion of our day, dear Father, in preparation for our worship, I pray that you will clear our minds of all distractions that we can give you the highest praise glory and honor that you rightly deserve we love you we thank you we ask all of this in Jesus name amen
glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I've been running ever since I made a start. Oh, in my days, oh, King Jesus gonna. Don't you know that his love is a bubbling over in my heart? Yes, in my heart, let's sing hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Well, I've been running ever since I made a star. Oh, you know that my days of King Jesus gonna make my well, don't you know that his love is a bubbling over in my well? We're singing holly, holly, say glory, holly, holly. Well, I've been running ever since I made a star. Oh, you know that my days are. King Jesus gonna make my well. Don't you know that in love is a well? Don't you know that in love is a well? Don't you know that in love is a bubbling over in my heart? Yes, in my heart. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. God has been so good to us. He has blessed us to see another day. We'll sing one more verse of a song, and then we'll have our announcements for today. I woke up this morning with my mind, and you know it was steady. You know that I woke up this morning with my You know it was stayed on the Lord, and you know that I woke up this morning with my mind, and you know it was stayed. Oh, I'm singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm hoping and praying, I'm a hoping and praying with my mind. And you know it was stayed on Jesus. You know that I'm a hoping and praying with my mind. You know it was Stayed on the Lord, and you know that I'm a hoping and praying with my mind, and you know it was stay. Well, I'm singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Good morning, Cliff View. I am before you to do a few brief announcements, and then at the conclusion of our worship service, I'll come back and put some more emphasis on some of these and add additional announcements. First of all, we want to let you know that if you are visiting with us here at the Cliff View Church of Christ, you are our honored guest, and we will more formally recognize you at the conclusion of our worship service. Remember to continue to bring your coats for our warm hope for our warm coat drive. Also, if you don't want to go out and buy the coats, you can give the money to Sister Shonda Robinson and she will make sure that your money is well spent. And again, as always, I, rec I ask you to bring some of your gently used coats. Uh, and be considerate of, of the what, what we're trying to do here. We want our good work to be well spoken of. You can also uh, get a lot for your buck at places like Ross, Marshalls, Needy's, and stores like that. We want to make sure, our goal is to have 50 plus coats, and we're going to give them out in the community, as well as if there are some members here at the Cliffy Church of Christ that may be in need of a coat, we would like to give you a coat as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Continue to pray for our sick and shut in, and those who may be traveling, and especially those who have lost loved ones. Not only uh, pray for them, but give them a call, a word of encouragement, and, you know, I always tell you, after the funeral is over with, that's when the darkest hour really comes along. And that's when the people need us most. Amen? 
So please contact those who you know have lost loved ones. We're very, very excited about the work that the Lord has blessed us with here at the Cliffy Church of Christ. Your offerings and your dedication has, has, we, has been well spent. We ask that you continue to give of yourself and your funds as we see what a wonderful and magnificent job that is being done here at the Cliffy Church of Christ. The question has been asked and asked and asked. When are we going to be back in the building? We have an answer now. Amen? A little more excitement. We have an answer now. October the 7th, we will have our building dedication here, and it will be at 10 o'clock from 10 to 12. There will be a lot of history. There will be a lot of stuff going on. Please, not only bring yourself, bring your neighbors, and bring your friends. It will be a marvelous day here at the Cliff Future Church of Christ. Immediately following that day, if the Lord says so, on October the 8th, we will have our installation service for the magnificent man of God that, that we have here at the Cliffy Church of Christ. We are really asking, we're really asking for you to reach out. Remember the cards that tell you, start passing out your cards, use your Facebook network, whatever you need to do to make it known on October the 8th. We will have our regular uh, Sunday morning Bible study, which will be at 9 a.m., we will have our 10 a.m. worship service, and then we will have our 2 o'clock installation service. Amen? I want to ask that you continue to bring your young people and encourage them. Uh, I am busy about the Lord's business. If that offends you, pray for me. I want you to start bringing your youth and get them ready to be a part of our magnificent Children's Bible Hour, and we are getting ready to start back having our youth Bible study. The teachers are ready. The material is ready. Please get your kids ready. Amen. At this time, we're going to ready to uh, ask that you secure your electronic devices, and we're going to be going to our Sunday morning worship service. If you would, please pray with me. Dear God in heaven, we once again want to come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Father God, we want to thank you for this morning, giving us another reasonable portion of our health and our strength, allowing us to come out and to assemble and to study your word. Father God, we want to thank you for those who have tuned in online. We pray for those who are tra traveling. We ask that you extend unto them the grace that you extended to us, praying that they will arrive here at the building in a safe manner. We pray now that each and every one of us will open our minds and open our hearts to the teaching of your word, and we'll be able to use it in our day-to-day -day lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let us all say amen again. Amen. God has brought us to this place again. This week has had its ups and downs, its challenges, its victories, but he has brought us to another first day of the week so we can worship him. And so I was just thinking as I was preparing our selection for right now, we still have joy after all that we have been through. We still have joy. If you would like to say or have something to say to the church, you can come down as we sing this selection. Uh, I still have joy. I still have joy. You know I still have joy. And after all the things I, oh, I still have, still have joy. I still have. Anybody got joy? I still have joy and after all the things i oh i still have still have love i still have anybody got love i still have oh lord and after all the things i oh i still have still have love i still have got a little bit of love i still have Love, and after all the things I, well, I still have, still have peace, I still have, you know, you know, I still have peace, and after all the things I, well, I still have, still 
still have peace, I still have. Got a little bit of peace, I still have. Peace, you know, and after all things up, well, I still have. Still have joy, I still have. Oh, you know I still have joy. And after all, I still have, still have joy. I still have got a little bit of joy. I still have joy. And after all the things I will, I still have joy. We have a couple that responded to the invitation. Um, ask them to stand and just stay with them on their heart. My name is Joe Jackson. I want to thank all you brothers and sisters for your prayers as I travel the highways and byways of the United States of America. I am back. I probably, uh, I probably won't uh, leave uh, for another couple of months. And I also would like to ask that you pray for my neighbor, Donald Williams. He was hit by a vehicle on Monday. His wife say he has all his ribs are cracked or broken. He has uh, a head injury and other numerous injuries to his body. He's still in intensive care. So would you please pray for Donald Williams? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Brother Jimmy Herod. My cousin Gary, he's home from the hospital. He's doing fine. And also pray for my mom this morning. She got up. She said, son, I'm going to ride with you. But I don't feel like ironing. I say, mama, God know your heart. And pray for Thomas, too. He's working today. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Uh, James Nolly. I come down to thank you, first of all, for your prayers for my health. Uh, there are some rumors going around, so I need to squash those. I'm not on the kidney transplant list. Amen. Okay, I, uh, My kidneys aren't functioning like they're supposed to, but at 75 years old, ain't nothing functioning like it's supposed to. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your prayers, and I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm doing pretty good, and I'm following Sister Nala's instructions. Amen. I want to ask the church to pray for Brother Chill Wheel. He lost his niece uh, over the, I think, the weekend or the past few days. So we're asking that you will pray for him and give him words of encouragement. Amen. Amen. Do we have anyone else at this time? Anyone else? Go ahead, Joe. Um. I just want to, uh, Joe Robertson, uh, I just want to uh, let the church know that we did real good yesterday. We Amen. delivered the snacks for the kids down in Southwestern. Uh, had a good time with them. They loved us. They was overjoyed when they saw us. If you've been in that atmosphere, uh, been in college and you're hungry all the time. <laughs> so uh, we, we did an excellent job. Rep, uh, Cliff, you represented real good. Uh, it's a blessing. Also, Jerome had to uh, preach uh, at the Light of the World today. That's why he's not here. So, uh, and Jackie had to work. So, y'all just pray uh, for us as a family that we all do what's good and represent Christ like we should. Thank you. Amen. Do we have anyone else at this time? Anyone else? We're going to ask Brother Carlson if he would go to God in prayer on their behalf. Yeah, we're going to do that. I need y'all to help me this morning. We need to go to God in prayer collectively. I mean, that means I need you praying while I'm praying. We're going to God. Almighty and everlasting Father. Father God, we come in your presence this morning with bowed head and I'm a horse this morning. First of all, Father, just thanking you for waking us up, 
clothed in a reasonable portion of our right mind. And for that, Father, we're just going to say thank you. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory for anything that we do because we can't do it without you. We thank you, Father, for just being with us as we go through our life. We ask, God, that you would just continue to do as you have in the past. We come this morning. Some of your saints have stood this morning, God, and asked for, for prayer. Brother Joe asked for prayer for Don Williams that had a real bad accident. And God, we, we come to you in his behalf because that's his neighbor and he's concerned about him. We come to you, Father, this morning in his behalf. We ask God if it be your will that you would heal him and get him back on his feet one more time. And God, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. We come this morning praying for each and every one that's under the sound of my voice this morning. Before, Father, we, we, we all need you, and we all need you right now. So, God, we just thank you for being the God that you are. We come in the behalf of Brother Chill and his brother that lost his daughter. We ask, God, that you comfort them as we know you can, and we know you will. Uh, we, we, we know you will. We've been, we've been down these roads before, and we know, God, that you can comfort, and we can depend on you, and we just say, thank you already. God, thank you for each and every one that came down this morning that had a need, knowing that if they come to you, that, that, that you are listening, that you are there waiting to Hear from us, God, we're speaking to you this morning. We pray for those that are traveling. We ask God traveling grace to their destination and back. We want to, Father, continue to pray for our minister as he is out there on the highways, him and his wife. We ask God that you bless him and you bless them. Bless them real, real good. We ask God that you... Build a bubble around them as they move down these highways. God, we ask you to, to build a hedge around them because we know that this word that's been teached that the devil is not happy. And God, we're just going to thank you for all. We come praying for our elders that are, have to prayerfully be coming to you about different things. We ask God that you bless them and to bless their families in a mighty way. Uh, we ask God that you bless the servants, the deacons that you have put in place, put in their heart a working uh, attitude. God, we need them on the battlefield. We pray this morning for each and every member here. We ask God that you give them the zeal to come and work in your vineyard. And Father God, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you most of all for your love for us that you sent Jesus. Yeah. And we thank you for Jesus' ob obedience that he went to yonder's cross. And Father, we're just going to thank you for him. And in Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Ship of Zion. Can we take it back? Tis the old ship of Zion. Tis the old ship of Zion. Anybody know this song? Get on board, get on board. It has, it has landed uh, many a 
thousands hell and thousands in hell and many a thousands get on board get on board it's alright to go back sometime ain't it it's alright when all, when all God's children, God's children get together, said, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time. I'm where we're going to sit down by the banks, by the banks of the river. The river said, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time. It, oh, when all, when all God's children, God's children get to heaven, said, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time. What a time. What a time where we're going to sit down by the banks, by the banks of the river. The river said, oh, what a time, what a time, what a, what a time. Oh, said, oh, when all, when all, when all God's children got Children get together, said, oh, what a time, what a, what a time, oh, what a time, oh, what a time, oh, what a time, I'm aware we're going to sit down by the banks, by the banks of the river, the river said, oh, what a time. What a time, what a time, what a time it will be. Amen. Your response of reading this morning will come from Proverbs 19, 11. This Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Please repeat after me. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger and his glory is to overlook a transgression amen 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 I was uh, just old times is all over my heart this morning I was uh, there's a sacred selection. Y'all remember sacred selection? Yeah, no, it's a, number 666. Jesus is coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> so the old sacred selection, the red book. Let's sing it our new way, and then after which we'll have our scripture reading and our prayer. My Jesus is Jesus is coming soon, morning or more or not. Oh, noon, many will me, will me, their doom trumpets will sound, and all of the dead that shall ride righteous meeting in the sky, going where, where no one die, heaven were to. Heaven were bound, my Jesus is, Jesus is coming soon, morning or morning or night or noon, many will meet, will meet their doom, trumpets will sound, oh, and all of the dead, dead shall our righteous meeting. 
in the sky going where I go where no one died heavenward ooh, heavenward bound and trouble sometime all here and a feeling this hard with fear for it I'm we all draw near now it says stay Humble your hearts to God and free from the chest. Sneak right and seek the way, pilgrim stride, glory to share. And my Jesus is Jesus coming soon. Morning or more. Or will sign oh, and all of the dead oh righteous meeting in the skies going where go where no one dies going where go where no one dies going where going where no This morning's scripture taken from Job uh, chapter 23 verses 8 through 10. That's Job uh, chapter 23 verses 8 through 10. I'll give you a moment to find your Bibles. And the word reads, Look, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. The scripture taken from Job chapter 23, verses 8 through 10. Please stand and pray, hearts and minds for prayer. There are some things, oh, some things I may not know. Jesus. 
Jesus washed your sins, your sins away, your sin, yes, but since that day. in my soul and yes my God is real for he has and made me whole and yes his love for me his love for me is just like pure gold Dearly Father, first and foremost, Lord God, we just want to say thank you, Heavenly thank Father. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this very moment, this opportunity to come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you for the gift of prayer that we can always call on your name, knowing that you're listening, knowing that you understand, and that you always, Lord, always, always answer, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for just having your grace upon us, your mercy, Lord, because we we do not deserve your blessings, Lord, but you continue to give it to us, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the ones that have made it here today, Lord. We thank you for the ones that are watching online. We thank you for the ones that wanted to be here, but they couldn't be here, Lord. We just praying and asking, Lord, that you continue to be in all our hearts, all our minds, and all our souls. Continue to guide us, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, as we prepare to study another portion of your word, Lord God, Lord, we just pray and ask, Lord, that you may touch our hearts touch our minds open our hearts and our minds to your word speak to us through your word lord guide us and bless us with more information more knowledge more strength more faith more obedience more loyalty to you lord god that we may be able to walk this world lord and let your light shine on us embrace that light that everyone that may see us says something's different about that one right there lord god lord we pray and ask lord that you may be with brother martin lord as the words that he studied lord that you may Bless him to recall and recollect him, Lord, and to deliver him the way he has, he has studied, the way you have gave him the, the grace and the power to, steal, to do it, Lord God. Lord, we just pray and ask that you continue to be with us all, Lord. Watch over us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for giving us of our many, many sins, Lord, the ones we commit willingly and unwillingly, Lord, by omission and commission, by word, deed, or thought, even by our eyes, Lord. Lord, bless us, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting that role, walking that path, and giving us an opportunity to follow that path as you lead us, Lord. That is the only way we can make it back to your Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you. And in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. If you can, remain standing. If you can, if you can, remain standing. Because if nobody's feet don't hurt, it's mine. 
got these boots on this thing. I may not wear them again. <laughs> may not wear them again. But these dogs is barking. Watch ye therefore you know not the day, the day when the Lord shall call your souls away. Trumpet sound when the trumpet church say amen say amen again now one more again like you truly truly mean it we serve a mighty 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 good God who is worthy to be praised did he not watch over you did he not dispatch some angels to, to watch over you while you slept and slumbered and then in his infinite wisdom decided to wake you up to see a day that was not promised to you a day that you will never ever see again and for that we all ought to be eternally and everlastingly grateful now before getting into the sermon on this morning I do want to commend our ladies for an outstanding 19th annual ladies and adolescent symposium they had on yesterday we appreciate all who were involved all of our speakers and just because i'm married to her i just want to give a shout out to sean amen i got calls and text messages that she just did an outstanding job and not only did she do an outstanding job i need to be worried about my job Lord have mercy. But during the course of the program, uh, near the end, there were uh, many sisters who submitted cards and dropped it in the SFJTD box, something for Jesus to do. 
we didn't read any information on the cards, but what I want to do at this moment before getting into it is pray. For everyone who dropped a card in this box, everyone who had an issue that they've been carrying around for a long time, a load that's been weighing you down, keeping you from being all that God wants you to be. I just want to pray for you at this time. So if you would bow with me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come before your precious throne of grace and mercy. We come, dear Father, because Jesus died for us. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, we have access to the throne of of grace and mercy. Dear Father, your children, your daughters, your princesses uh, dropped cards, dear Father, of concerns, cards of issues, problems, and situations that they've been wrestling with for a mighty, mighty long time. Right now, dear Father, I pray that you look down upon them individually as well as collectively. I pray, dear Father, if it's a sin, that you will forgive them. If it's a weakness, that you will strengthen them. If it's a dilemma, that you will deliver them. I pray, dear Father, that whatever they stand in need of, you will bless them right here and right now. We pray in Jesus' name for freedom. We pray in Jesus' name for deliverance. We pray in Jesus' name for commitment and reconnection. We pray in his powerful name that you will lift their burdens and bestow upon them blessings. We pray now, dear Father, that as we go forward in carrying out your will, we pray, dear Father, that you will just go before us, protect us, guide us, and dear Father, we will be ever so careful to give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. It is in the sweet and it is in the powerful name of Jesus that we lift this prayer. Amen and amen. The text for today is Job chapter 23. If you would please stand for the reading of the word of God. Job chapter 23 verses 8 through 10. And we shall see if there be a word from the Lord. The Bible says, look, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. I want to preach simply from the subject, a journey to Job's house with a subtopic, the left side of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Someone has once said that you don't have to trouble trouble for trouble to trouble you. All you got to do is wake up and there's trouble. All you got to do is drive down the highway and, and there's trouble. Uh, but it's a blessing to know that through it all, God's eyes have never left us. He sees us in all of our seasons, seasons of distress, seasons of strength, seasons of losses, and seasons of victories. What we have before our very eyes in the form of divine inspiration is the story of a man uh, by the name of Job. If I was Medea, I would call him Job, but, but this is Job. Uh, Job is an interesting person in the Bible, the word of God. We know that Job was an upright man that prayed for his family, that sought to live for God in a righteous manner. But there was a day when a conversation took place uh, between divinity and the devil. Uh, a dialogue took place between uh, God and Satan. And Job was on the agenda uh, of this particular 
conversation that, that God had. Y'all mind if I just retell the story in, in short form and, and then I'll say what needs to be said and then we'll get up out of here. Uh, praise the mighty name of Jesus. But God says, listen, I, I see you moving forward and, and backward. It looks like you're looking for somebody to mess up, somebody uh, to throw down, somebody to destroy. God says, have you considered my servant Job? There's, there's none like him in all of the land. It's, it's good when God knows your name. It's, it's good when God gives you uh, a divine recommendation for trouble, uh, trials, and uh, tribulations because God would not bring you uh, to a thing uh, if God was unable to bring you through a thing. The devil says, yeah, I, I see him, but, but you got a hedge around him. You got divine protection uh, around him. Uh, if you let me touch him, he'll curse you to your face. Uh, God says, listen, uh, uh, you, you, you can have your way with him. Just, just don't take his life. You can touch his body and things around him, uh, but just don't take his life. Uh, I believe the first shout is uh, the devil can't touch you uh, without divine permission. Uh, if you're going through something, uh, it's only because God is allowing you uh, to go through what you go through. Uh, but God wouldn't do such a thing uh, if God wasn't willing and ready to deliver you uh, from what the devil brings you through and so we find that he began dealing with Job he began testing Job and, and trying Job uh, Job lost all of his kids in one night 10 kids gone uh, Job lost all of his livestock which means that he lost his finances that was the means of uh, his wealth and and then sister job said you know what you just need to curse god and die now now this is just peter martin i don't know if she said that because she was looking for a new job uh, lord have mercy come on back to jesus come on back to jesus this is just my overactive imagination working she said curse god and die it just seems as if job one day was on top of the world and the next day the world was on top of job he has lost here and lost there but job says it's the lord that gives it's the lord that takes away blessed be the name of the lord i wish we had folk with the spirit of job in this house on today uh, because we experience loss at times uh, loss after loss after loss uh, but can you still praise God uh, can you still thank God uh, can you still glorify God uh, even in the midst of the loss that you go through uh, he says blessed be uh, the name of the Lord uh, but Job is like all of us because those days get a little dark those days get a little dreary. And, and then Job had some friends to come from afar. Uh, their names were Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and Zophar. Uh, they, they came to Job because they heard of the plight that had come to Job. And they sat there for seven days, yeah, and didn't say a word. Not a mumbling word. I'll be where you want me to be in just a moment. It's, it's good when when folks show up to see you it's good when folks show up to support you but 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 sometimes we just need the ministry of presence and not the ministry of proclamation sometimes we don't need you to say anything uh, just sit there just just hold our hand just just put a hand on our shoulder because not everybody knows what to say uh, in the middle of your storm the moment they opened up their mouths, they all started saying uh, the wrong thing. Uh, what they failed to understand uh, is that there are two types of storms. Uh, there are storms of correction uh, and storms of perfection. Uh, some
some of the storms that we go through in life are because of our disobedience. It's because of our lack of loyalty. It's because of our lack of love. It's because our priorities weren't where they're supposed to be. And so God allows us to go through storms of correction because he's trying to correct the flaws that are within us. But church, there are storms of perfection. These storms take place not because of sin, but because God sees something in you that he's trying to grow, that he's trying to pull out so you can be more faithful, so you can be more fruitful, so you can be wiser, so you can be stronger. And so God allows seasons of adversity to come in your life so that you can be a better you. And so they tried to give explanation to Job's tribulation. They tried to exegete his, his situation. They tried to, to break it down. You're going through this because of this, that, and the other. No man goes through what you've been through uh, unless he is in sin. That's why it's sometimes best not to say say any anything god god is at work but but now job is bothered job is bothered because he knows hey I, i'm trying to do what's right I, I i try to come to worship i i i log in on wednesday night to to get a word from from the lord i i, I try to get on high noon prayer tuesday and thursday at, and so even though i'm active sunday tuesday wednesday thursday trouble still comes my way adversity still comes my way and sometimes we begin to question uh, whether or not God cares uh, about our calamities uh, why is it that bad things uh, are happening to good people you ever ask yourself that question uh, why am I going through this why am I going through that uh, I'm trying to live right uh, I pray every day uh, I treat folk right uh, I love folk that put knives in my back I try to do what God wants me to do uh, but I'm still dealing uh, with burdens bruises uh, and I'm still bum rushed uh, in this life uh, and we begin sometimes to question whether or not God is truly for us Job got to the point where he cursed the day he was born because things just got 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 rough not 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 only not only did he lose his family not only did he lose his finances, but now he, he lost his health. He got boils over his body uh, from the crown of his head uh, to the bottom of his feet. He's taking pot sheared, which is pieces of clay, and he's scratching himself because uh, the boils are agonizing. Can, 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 can you see him? Can, can, can you see Job? He's sitting on a heap of ashes. He's, he's wondering where did things go wrong? He says, I got an idea. I'm going to take God to court. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take him to court because I know what I'm dealing with, what I'm experiencing is not because of sin in my life. This is completely unfair. And if anybody needs to answer for the adversity that has come upon me, it's God. And so he says, I'm looking for him. I can't wait. And he says, I believe I'll win the court case. Oh, Lord have mercy. He says, I believe uh, I will get the victory because I'm suing the sovereign God uh, and I'm taking him to court, uh, but there's a problem. I can't find him. I, I, I look forward. He ain't there. I look back. I, I can't see him, but on the left, he's working, but on the right, I can't behold him uh, y'all come just for a moment let me whisper some some sobering words into uh, your ears uh, God has a front back left right the front part of God is concealed can't see it Exodus chapter 33, 18 through verse number 22. No man can see the face of God and live. Moses wanted to see God's face. God said, no, you can't look at me and die and live. If you see me, you're going to die right there on the spot. But he says, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll hide you in the cleft 
of a rock and when I pass by you I, I'll let you look at my backside uh, so now the front side is concealed uh, but the back is revealed is there a church in the house uh, I'll let you see the glory but then there's a left side uh, that that left side or the right side let's deal with that first that's a place of honor that's a place of privilege that's a place of authority that's a place of blessings uh, many of us don't mind living on the right side of God uh, Lord I want to be on your right side I want blessing uh, after blessing I want you to take me from strength to strength uh, I want you to take me from glory to glory uh, I've dealt with enough stuff in my life uh, I am due uh, some blessings uh, and so I want to stay uh, on the right side but then there's the left side now now brother man is is left-handed South Paul some of y'all think there's something wrong with us, but at least we got a scholarship. <laughs> but when you look at left hand in certain cultures, it, it doesn't have a positive connotation to it. They believe that the left hand is, is filthy. They believe the person who, who uses their, their left hand is is sinister, a trickster. And so folk who were left-handed uh, were looked down upon, that there was a negative connotation to left-handedness. And so when we take this and we apply it to our position with God, uh, there is reason to want to be on his right side and not the left. Because on the left, there's burdens. On the left, there's adversity. On the left, there's problems. Uh, on the left, there is seemingly hopelessness. On the left, there's a ditch that I can't get out of. Uh, and so I don't want to be on the left side of God. I want to be on the right side of God. But watch the text. The text says that God is working on the left. Oh, don't miss your shout. God is, is working. You can't see him. Sometimes in the seasons of storms that come into your life, uh, but it doesn't mean that God is inattentive uh, or not sympathetic about your situation. God says, I want you to know that I'm at work. I, I'm at work. The, the more amens I get, the faster this goes. Yeah, y'all gonna make me unpack and I'm trying not to go into professor mode. I, I, I just want to make this thing as plain and as practical as possible. God is working uh, on the left side. Uh, in those moments in your life where you feel that God is most absent, uh, that is when God is working. God is up to something when you feel down to nothing. God uh, is working on something for your behalf. The Bible says uh, all things work together for good uh, to them that love God, to them who are the called uh, according to uh, his purpose or so even uh, in the midst of your misery in the midst of your dilemmas you ought to be encouraged uh, by the fact that your God is working uh, he's just working on the left side uh, I know you want to be on the right side I know you want to pitch a tent on the right side uh, I know you want every day to be sunny and no rain to come uh, upon your life uh, but every now and then uh, God allows us to be on the left side uh, every now and then uh, you got to experience some burdens uh, whether I'm on God's right hand uh, or left hand uh, it doesn't matter as long as the hand of God uh, is on me uh, because if the hand of God uh, is on me uh, his power is on me his provision is on me uh, and somehow some way someday uh, everything uh, is going to be uh, all right so so sometimes Sometimes we got to camp out on the left side, but he's working. I can't see what he's doing. I can't see what he's putting in place. I can't see uh, what people are prepared, where resources are, are being prepared uh, for my benefit. Uh, but God is at work. Job says, I'm looking for him. I can't find him. I need to find him. I need to serve him uh, some papers because I want him in court. But Job doesn't see that he's, he's working. And sometimes as Christians, it gets hard. 
when we talk about ministry, when we talk about working for the Lord, sometimes it gets hard because we feel as if God is against us. And if God is against me because of what I'm going through, uh, then how can I be for him and serve? Sometimes my problem gets in the way of my purpose. But once you get a proper perspective of your problem, you then can embrace God's purpose. To know that God sees all time at one time, to know that even in the midst of what you're going through uh, on the left side, I, I'm so glad that I serve a God who is ambidextrous. He works with his right hand as well as his left hand and he, he knows what you and I need. I, I know I want to be on there, but God sees something in me that says, nah, bro, you need to be on the left side. There's some lessons that you need to learn. There's some blessings that come from the lessons on the left side that, that you need together. I, I'm not going to keep you in this thing forever, but just long enough for you uh, to develop and cultivate what you need uh, in order to be a blessing in the kingdom of God, uh, dear son. I'm going to let you hang out on the left side, uh, but I'm not going to leave you, although you can't see me, just know uh, that I'm working. I'm working on the left side. But then Job says, listen, but he knows the way that I take. Y'all better help me along in here. If not, I'm going to have to do some more dissecting. He knows the way that I take. Job, what are you saying? I'm saying that I can't see him, but he's never taken his eyes off of me. <laughs> every every single day his eyes are on me every every single day he's uh, watching me every single day he's watching me move he's watching me cry every tear that comes uh, out of my tear ducts he catches uh, in a bottle God knows the story behind every tear uh, he understands the situation uh, behind every fear uh, God says you may feel lonely you may feel as if I've neglected you uh, but I haven't gone anywhere in fact, I've been working on your behalf. I just need you to hold on just a little while longer and don't give up, don't give out, don't give in because sooner or later, I'm going to bring you out of what you've been in. And when I bring you out, it's going to be a far better situation than it was before. Oh, y'all stay with me, stay with me. I feel some preaching uh, coming on, but, but, but let me just, just, just slow it down just a little bit. He says, but he knows the way that I take. Every movement, every, everything that I've gone through, God, God knows. And I'm glad that I have a Savior that can not only sympathize, but empathize. He, he knows the pain. He knows what it f means to, to feel alone, to feel isolated, to feel burdened, to know that folk are talking about you on the left and talking about you on the right. He understands the heart, the condition of the heart. But I'm so glad that he not only empathizes, uh, but he energizes that is, he has the ability to do something about the situation. He says, he knows the way that I take. For when he has tried me. This is where you need to fasten your seatbelts. Turbulence is ahead. The term tried means tested. It means to prove the genuineness of something. When I slow down like this, that means I really need to pay attention because I'm about to drop something on you. It means that the test will reveal whether or not I'm fake or real. You ever seen somebody take a dollar and hold it up to the light? They're looking for a certain color pattern a certain thread to determine whether or not it's real or counterfeit. You see, the test is a light that reveals whether or not we are real or counterfeit. If you're counterfeit, you're going to fail the test. But if you're real, Lord have mercy. If, if, if you're shown enough real, uh, then the burden 
then takes on a different form now you begin to see the blessing now it's fashioning into something that God had already seen he says he knows the way that I take and when he has tested me when he has tried me uh, somebody ought to say I'm, I'm, being, I'm being tested I'm, I'm, I'm being tested uh, and the reason why God seems aloof is because when students are taking the test the teacher is quiet mm. when he has tested me he says I, I shall come forth as gold is that in your Bible I shall come forth as as gold Job Job what are you saying Job is saying I was one way before I went in but but now after I've come through what God allowed me to go through I'm going to be better coming out than I was going in I, I'm going to come out as as gold there's something that God was working out of me something that God was working in me and when I come out of what God has me in I, I'm going to come forth uh, as gold uh, whatever the devil is trying to do uh, is not going to prosper uh, because he meant it for evil uh, but God meant it for good uh, I'm so glad that God will allow us uh, to see the greater picture of the problems that we face in this life uh, our problems aren't designed uh, for us to complain about uh, but rather for us to contemplate uh, Lord what are you trying to show me uh, through this situation uh, you're bringing me through uh, this bereavement for a purpose uh, you're bringing me through brokenness uh, for a purpose uh, you're bringing me through health issues uh, for a purpose uh, I don't want to complain uh, I want to contemplate I want to think about what you're doing because if I can just keep my hand in your hand you're going to pull me out one way or the other and when I come out I'm coming forth as gold that's that's what he says that's 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 that's, that's what he says but but notice now when I'm in it when I'm in it I, 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 I don't want to send folk invitations uh, to my pity party I don't want you coming in and just listen to me complain about this and, and complain about this. I, I don't like this. I don't like that. Why I got to go through this? Why I got to go through that? Look at here. Look, look, look at here. If you're going to send out an invitation, send out an invitation to your coming out party. <laughs> because God getting ready to do something. Oh, let me close this thing out. Let me close this thing out. God brought him out and then later on, later on we find in Job chapter 42 that everything that Job lost, all of his possessions, the Lord doubled. Oh Lord have mercy, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Job was blessed with double for his trouble. His, 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 his possessions were, were doubled. Not only that, but he got 10 more children. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, 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 y'all yeah, still on the bus? We about to come to the destination shortly. Keep, keep your seatbelt on. We, the bus is still moving. Uh, he got 10 more children, uh, Deacon Carson. Uh, and it's interesting that throughout the entire book of Job, he's had 20 children. We never knew the names of the first 10. And the second batch of kids, we got the names of three, but only the daughters. Oh, is there a church in the house? I'm not preaching if I got to preach by myself. The first name of the daughter was Jemima. Uh, now, get your mind off of pancakes. We ain't talking about Aunt Jemima. Uh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We're talking about Jemima. Jemima means day or dove. Uh, when you look at the definition of day, it, it signifies something. Uh, Job had gone through uh, the midnight of affliction. Uh, he's gone through uh, the midnight of sorrow. Uh, he's gone through uh, the midnight of betrayal. Uh, he's gone through uh, the midnight of pain. Uh, but now that God has brought him out, uh, he's experiencing uh, daytime. Uh, Jemima represents uh, the daytime of his life. Uh, Jemima represents uh, the transition that led uh, to triumph. Uh, 
Jemima represents uh, that better days uh, have come uh, because weeping uh, may endure for a night uh, but joy cometh uh, in the morning uh, she's dead but then there's Keziah that's the second one Keziah's name means fragrance comes from a particular tree that's similar to that of cinnamon. And, and, and so there's a fresh, pleasant fragrance over the life of Job. Before things didn't smell all that well. I know when he had them boils, Irish Spring couldn't bless them. Y'all come on back to Jesus. But now the stench is gone and, and there's only a wonderful, pleasant fragrance. That's, that's what Keziah does. That's why you gotta be careful when you name your children. That's a whole nother lesson right there. So we got Jemima, we got Keziah, the last is Karen Hapuk. Karen Hapuk means boxed ointment. Now, now, what does that mean? You got to understand during this time period in the East, when women sought to beautify themselves, they would put boxed ointment on their faces, which was a dark mascara around their eyes to enlarge their eyes because large eyes were equivalent to beauty uh, and so he named her Karen Hapuk or boxed ointment because now he sees things clearly now he has a broader vision uh, of what God had been working on uh, long ago. Now he understands that his problem uh, was only a process uh, that brought him to uh, a promise. Uh, he now sees on this side uh, what God was trying to do uh, all along. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but when I drop down to pray, uh, Lord, I'm praying uh, for daytime to come. Uh, I'm praying uh, for a sweet fragrance. Uh, I'm praying uh, for you to enlarge my vision uh, because I want to see uh, what it is uh, that you're going to do. Uh, bless my eyes with faith uh, so I can walk by it uh, and not by sight. Uh, help me move uh, even though I may not see what's on uh, the other end. Uh, but if my hand uh, is in uh, your hand uh, then I know that everything uh, is going to be alright. Uh, maybe you go through uh, what you go through uh, so you can learn to trust God more uh, in your life. Maybe your trust meter has gotten low. Maybe you're riding on some fumes uh, and God has allowed you uh, to go through some stuff uh, so you can trust in him uh, with all of your heart uh, and lean not uh, on your own uh, understanding. Uh, there was a song uh, I, I used to be in, in the chorus in San Antonio. It said who? Yeah me. I was in the background. But I was in it. We even sung at the Silver Stars game. Woo! I was up there proud, but I tell you, I felt good. Y'all let me let me do that one time here. Anyway, come on back. There's a song we sung in a chorus called called Through It All. Uh, it, it, it goes something like this: Through it all, I I learned to trust in Jesus. I, I learned to trust in God. I, through it all, through it all, I, I learned to depend on his word. I, I thank him for the mountains. I, I thank him for the valleys. I, I thank him for the storms. I, he brought me through. Uh, for if I never had a problem, uh, 
I wouldn't know he could solve them. I, I wouldn't know what faith uh, in God could do. Uh, is there anybody that has uh, a through it all testimony? Uh, is there anybody that can shout in your losses? Uh, shout in your pain? Uh, shout in your bad health? Uh, because when I learn uh, how to shout, uh, I learn how to get through some stuff uh, in my life. Uh, I remember growing up and playing out in the yard and we'll get grass stains uh, in our clothes uh, and it's very very difficult uh, to get them kind of stains uh, out of clothes uh, but they came up with something uh, that's called shout uh, where you just spray shout uh, on the stains uh, and then wash them uh, what was once difficult uh, is now removed uh, if you got a stain just apply some shout uh, I'm trying to tell somebody uh, when you got pain uh, put some shout on it uh, when you got trouble uh, put some shout on it uh, when you got agony uh, put some shout on it uh, is there somebody that got some shout uh, in their spirit uh, I'm gonna shout it out uh, I'm gonna get out of trouble uh, out of pain uh, out of misery uh, out of anxiety uh, I'm gonna shout 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 it out uh, because that's what God wants me to do. Uh, praise Him uh, in the midst of everything uh, that's going on. Uh, it's time to shout. It's time to shout. And so, as we leave Job's house, as we leave Job's house, you know, Sister Job happy right about now. You know, not, not, nothing is said about her. <laughs> After that incident, we, we, could only, we could only apply guesswork to, to what happened with her if, if she's even still, still there. But that's, not, that's neither here nor, nor there. That ain't necessary knowledge for us to get to heaven. All, all, all I know is he came out better than when he went in. And God turned his situation around. Now, it doesn't make sense to take a trip to his house and then to leave his house the same way you walked in it. Because he says, I'm trying to show you some stuff. I'm trying to show you some stuff. Somebody right here is pained. Somebody came in here burdened. Somebody came in here with questions. You came in here with doubts. You came in here with faithlessness. You came in here with hopelessness. You walked in here with powerlessness. You came in here with no purpose. You came in here hoping that some song would be sung or some scripture would be explained that will help turn your situation around. Uh, but let me just tell you this, it's gonna take more than a song. It's gonna take more than a word. Uh, it's gonna take your agreement with the word uh, and your application of that word uh, for your life to begin to turn around. You are in whatever season you are in for a reason. Here's my thing, don't doubt God in your season. Don't doubt him. Don't, don't doubt him. Don't give Satan the victory because he will happily throw a party in hell on behalf of your doubting God. It's time for somebody to stop the party. It's time for somebody to stop the party and say, listen, I'm going to trust in him. Job said in Job 13, verse 15, though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I, yet will I trust him. Can you trust God today? Can you trust God today? There may be somebody who needs to trust him for salvation. You're in sin. You're outside of the ark of safety and salvation. See, when I preach, I want to preach to a decision. I'm not trying to make you shout. I'm trying to make you connect to God because you got a decision to make. My responsibility is simply to bring your hearts into direct confrontation with the word and the will of God. I want you to see God. I want you to hear what God is saying to you. And you have to respond. You have to make a decision and live with the decision. 
that you make. And so I'm not preaching to entertain. I'm preaching to get you to a place of resolve where you will trust and try Jesus and don't leave here the same way you came in. If you came in with an attitude because you just happened to wake up on the wrong side of the bed, in your mind, get back in bed, roll to the other side. <laughs> if you done kick the cat and slap the dog, go back home and apologize to them pets. <laughs> All right? But you ought to leave here differently. We're going to ask you to stand on your feet. Before we sing, before we sing, we want you to stand on your feet. We have a plethora of seats up front. If you just need to come, we want you to come. We want you to come. We want you to come. I heard that, that, that Sister Martin taught, preached on the woman with the issue of blood. One of the powerful words that, that Jesus shared in that, in that story in that miraculous experience come on down come on down come on down was was go go in peace can i can i drop something real quick the phrase go in peace is literally translated go into peace that means you are leaving one realm and going into another you're leaving one room and you're walking into another. But this only happens when you go through the door. Jesus said in John 10, 9, I am the door. I am the door. So if you want this peace that passeth all understanding, he says, I I want you to walk through the door <laughs> so you can then go into peace. Too many have become satisfied in the rooms of failures, in the rooms of disappointments, in, in the rooms of, of, of sin, of, of weakness, of, of doubt. It's time for you to leave that room and go into peace. Don't, don't make that room your living room. As a matter of fact, call contractor Jesus right now and have that room removed from your place of abode. Have them change it because it's time for somebody to experience peace. I don't know where you are. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I do know Jesus. And I know he's able to turn things around. I'm not sure if God's going to bless you like he blessed Job, but I know that he will bless you when you decide to follow him and keep your hand in his hands. Don't leave Job's house unchanged. Make the necessary changes. We're not trying to get in your business. We, we, don't, we don't need you to report. When you repent, God recognizes that repentance. And now the fruit of that repentance must be manifested in your life. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. I've sinned. I've sinned. And God's son, Jesus, his blood will cleanse all unrighteousness. If, you, if you're unsaved, you heard what Jesus did. He died, was buried, and rose. Believe that with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. Confess him today, this day, to be the son of God. And guess what we'll do? We'll baptize you today for the remission of your sins. When you are baptized, you are saved. You are delivered. And every sin that you have committed from the time of your earliest existence until now is wiped away washed away who would dare walk away from that blessing come to him who came down to you as we sing the Savior's invitation he
sweet I know. Isn't he sweet, church? Oh, isn't he sweet? He isn't he sweet? Sweet I know. I'll tell you those storms. Oh, those storm clouds. clouds may rise. They're going to rise in your life. And, those and guess what? Those winds of adversity. Winds may blow. No doubt they're going to blow. But I oh, I'll tell this soul. I'll world tell this world. Wherever, ever I go, I'll recommend I'll Jesus to them. them that I, I found. Did you find a savior? Found Have you found a savior? savior and he's sweet. Oh, and you know that he's sweet. I know. Storm clouds may rise, and those strong winds may blow. Oh, I'll tell the world. I'll tell the world. Tell this. I'm gonna tell the world. I'm gonna testify. Wherever, ever, ever I go, I'm going to tell them that I. Savior and oh, He's sweet and I you know. know and you know that He's sweet I know oh, oh, oh He's so sweet well I'll tell you those storm clouds Storm clouds may rise and those strong winds may blow, but I tell this old And I'll tell them that I found a say, and I'll tell them that I found a say, Evier, and he's so sweet, I know. Brother Martin. Brother Martin, what a word, what a word. What a word, what a word, what a word. We know we asked you to come down, but we got time for Jesus. I, I, I got, well, I got time for Jesus. If you want to stand where you are, we will come to you. Uh, I got Sister Fleming's brother, Chester is in the hospital, and we need to keep him in our prayers, please. We're going to start right here. Sister. Good morning, church. This is Carmen Jones. And I ask that God give me the strength of Job, that my grandbaby be returned to his family safe and sound. And y'all pray for this family. And my grandson's name is Carson. Y'all call his name, please. Amen. Amen. His name Carson. Did you get that? <laughs> y'all pray for him. Pray for me too. I'm Sister Medlock. I just ask in the church to pray for my nephew, um, Raymond Cannon. He lost his 34-year-old daughter. Her name is Tiffany Whitley. She will be buried Saturday in Waxahachie. So just keep us all in your prayers. Amen. 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 We're start. Uh, Paul Ingram, I ask the church to pray for me, my family, my extended family, and the church family. 
a special prayer for my cousin, the Everett family. Uh, she lost her life. <clears throat> she was the oldest left in this family. Now that reverts to my aunt, which gets closer to me. Uh, I also like to say a prayer for Glenn's father. He's the oldest on my mother's side of the family. So keep us all in your prayers. Thank you. Yes, sir. What's your young man? Good morning, church. I'm here on the behalf of one of the viewers from the stream, Mrs. Liz Juliet. She asked for a prayer for her and her family. Someone has tried to steal my husband's car again. And there's trouble with the dispatchers, which is causing further headache. Please keep Miss Sister Liz Juliet, Sister Juliet, in your prayers, please. Emma. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Amen. Pardon my seat. Bob. First of all, I want to ask God in front of you guys to forgive me for not trusting. You know, I keep trying to do things by myself, and I keep running from God. I keep running from the church, but it's not getting any better. So I'm asking you to pray for me, pray for my family, um, and that's... I'm just, I've got to learn to leave it alone and put it in his hands. In good hands. Is there any others? If not, we ask Brother Aldridge to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all your blessings that you give us. Father, we thank you for the word that we heard this morning, Brother Martin. Father, we pray that we can take the word and we can apply it to our lives. That help us, Father, be better today than we were yesterday. Father, continue to be with him and his family. Crown his head, Father, with wisdom and knowledge. Father, we pray for the ones that come down. Father, you know what they're going through in their lives. You know everything. And we just pray, Father, that you would give them what they need. Strengthen them, Father, in the area that they need strengthening. We know that some is dealing with death and sickness. We know, Father, that it's always trials and tribulations in life that we have to cope with. But we just pray, Father, that you continue to be with us and just strengthen us, Father. Father, we pray that you continue to be with Mike. Father, give Mike that strength that he needs. Father, we know that we all struggle with something, and we just pray that we have you to lean on. Father, continue to be with, the, with, with Becky and, and the rest of them that come and you know, having prayer. And I mean, I can't think of everybody, but you know what they're going through. Yes, yes. And we just pray, Father, that you continue just to be with them and to continue to love them. Father, when we go contrary to you and we sin against your name, Father, we pray that you forgive us of that sin. We can't make it one day without your love. And I pray this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All night, you know it was all day. You the angel watching over me. My all night, all night, all day, all day. You know the angel watching all Oh, 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 all night, night, all day, all day. Well, the angel watching over me, my all night, all night, all day, all day. The angel watching over me. important part of our service where we give our offering. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 when we should give and that teaching says we should give on the first day of the week. The Bible also teaches us
how we should give, what kind of mindset we should have when we give our offering. That teaching is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. As the brothers pass among you, please give. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me. Me, Lord, I'll be said it. Oh, it's any old way, any way. You bless me, Lord. You know, I'll, I'll be satisfied anyway, anyway. You bless me, Lord. You know, I'll, oh, oh anyway, you bless. Me, Lord, you know I'll, I'll be satisfied anyway, anyway. You bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Did we omit anyone? If not, let us pray for the offering. Our Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we are truly grateful for this day. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to give back a portion of what we've been blessed with. We pray, Father, that you would bless this offering and bless those who gave and those who wanted to give but had not. We pray that what was given would be used to teach and preach your word throughout this community, throughout the world. This is a prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. This brings us to another important part of our service where we remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you do not have an offering cup, please raise your hand and the brothers will kindly serve you. We remember how he lived his life, how he died on the cross was buried in a barred tomb and how he rose up out of that tomb on the third day. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 30. I will start at verse 26 because the Bible gives us a warning. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, continuing in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this opportunity to remember your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Resurrection, For he has given us the opportunity for your love and your forgiveness. 
We pray, Father, for all who partake. We pray that you would bless, bless us and forgive us of our sins. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. He broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. Let us pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, again we approach thy holy and divine throne, thanking you for your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. Thanking you for allowing him to die on the cross, to be buried in a borrowed tomb, to rise up out of that tomb with all power in his hands. We pray, Father, that all who partake of this symbol that represents your son, we pray that you would bless us, Father. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah, help me sing hallelujah, 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 and a hallelujah. Help me sing hallelujah, a hallelujah, hallelujah, oh what a friend we, what a friend we have all our, all our sins and griefs to Oh, what a privilege, what a privilege to carry everything everything to my God oh that's why we sing hallelujah hallelujah uh -huh. And a hallelujah, a hallelujah, and a hallelujah, hallelujah. Did we omit anyone? If not, that concludes the communion service. Once again, we want to thank Brother Martin for that inspiring sermon. I'm before you to do a few uh, brief announcements. Uh, we want to ask that you continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in, those who are traveling, those who have lost loved ones. Uh, basically, we're asking you to pray for the entire Cliffview Church family. Again, we want to continue to announce that the Children's Bible Hour has started. 
Children's Bible Hour is back and is held every other uh, Sunday, which I think is the second and fourth Sunday. Uh, that program has been entrusted to the oversight, I mean, to the leadership of Brother, brother and Sister Knight. We're asking that our children ages 3 to 10 will be a part of that program, and we'll be starting up our regular uh, Bible classes for all ages uh, starting very, very soon. So start making plans and preparations to bring those. Uh, we did have a lot of youth here this morning, a lot of 3- and 10-year-olds, so we need all of our young kids to ask your mom that I really need to be back at the Cliffview Church of Christ on next Sunday. Amen? Make sure you tell your mom, bring me back, because they have something for me, and I need to be there to get it. Amen? We look forward to seeing you guys again on next Lord's Day. Uh, the Cliffview Ladies' Day program was a big success. I don't want to... <clears throat> I don't want to beat a live horse, but this needs to be beat. Those ladies really showed up and showed out on yesterday. We had special announcement. Uh, it said a special thank you to the Cliffview Sisters for your support for coming out in big numbers to our 19th annual Ladies' Day program. Thank you to our youth keynote speakers, Kamisha Graves and Sister Tamara Smith, for encouraging... Our young ladies, with, our, with, with your inspiring message and activity. Special thanks to, um, to our adult keynote speaker, which is Sister Sean Martin, for her insightful, engaging, and, um, and above all, a powerful message relating to the story of the sister with the issue of blood and relating the concerns with problems and issues we face every day but may be afraid to share Sister Martin's final point of her message was allowing each sister to write down their personal issue and to drop them in a prayer box. Again, we thank you, Sister Martin, for your hard work and preparation for the... Brother Pouncey wrote this word for me, I'm sure. This phenomenon... <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I thought about Brother Pouncey. He was the most talented person I've ever seen. But whatever that word is, I'm real close on it. You know what it means. Finally, special thank you for all the program participants and individual sisters and brothers that made, their don that made donations. We want to thank you. And ladies, please continue to pray for the issue that you place in the box. And ladies, pray for one another in general. The building dedication will be October the 7th from 10 to 8. And the minister's installation from 10 to 12. 10 8, which is October the 8th, will be the minister installation program. Again, the building dedication will be October 7th from 10 to 12. The minister installation will be October the 8th. Morning worship will be at 10 o'clock. The program will start at 2. More information will be given unto you by, by Brother Channing Gillard. We're asking that on that day for the minister installation, if you would please wear any shade of blue on that day. Amen? Any shade of blue. However, if you have a problem with a shade of blue, there's a strong chance that the sisters will provide you with a little piece of blue. You will be in blue on that day. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your participation in advance. Remember the coat drive. Continue to bring your coats. We want to continue to fill the rack. We fill the rack on each Sunday. They move the coats out. We bring others in. So don't be discouraged. We want you to fill that rack. Amen. And then we will pass them out at the uh, designated time. At this time, we want to acknowledge our visitors. I did receive two visitors' cards, and I will read them. And if you would like to stand or wave when we call your name, please do so. We have uh, Sister Stephanie Brown, and she do have four children. Amen. 
looks and she's risen with the mount from the Mountain View Church of Christ. She looks like she has some twins. They are? They gonna fit right in there, Cliffy. We got a house full of twins. We need two more. <laughs> Amen. We have John Jenkins, and he is a guest of Gary Aldrich Jr. which is a proud product of the Cliffview Church of Christ Children's Bible Iowa. I remember when I first came here, he was one of my first students. I'm so proud of him. And it's good to see a young man still out there promoting the work of the Lord. Amen. Any other visitors to my left? Any visitors to our center? Any visitors to my right? We want you to know you are, I mean, any guests. We do want you to know you are on a guest. We pray that you will be back with the Cliffview Church of Christ at the next opportune time. Saints, 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 please invite for the ministry installation and our building dedication. Every chance you get, take a look at the building. I suggest you snap because when you come back the next day, what you saw today will not be there tomorrow. This young man and his team is really doing a phenomenal job. Amen. At this time, we will have our closing song and our closing prayer. Let us be standing. Oh, I... excuse me. One other thing, I apologize. I really need to read this. We do have a card from Brother Cliff Robinson. I want him, I would like to read it. It says, may the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me. And that comes from Ruth 1 and 8. Thank you so much for praying for us. We, uh, we felt your prayers. We love you all. Cliff and Sandra Robinson. I do apologize, but I needed to read that. Amen. Let us be standing. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me each and every day. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And I'm singing glory, highly. I'm so thankful that Jesus lifted. I'm so glad I said I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And each and every day I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me and I'm singing glory high. Well, I'm singing glory high. Well, I'm singing glory highly. I'm so thankful that Jesus lifted me. Let us pray. Our dear and heavenly Father, I want to thank you, members, that has came out to listen and hear your word. I want to thank the members that's out here, the one that's on the road, the one that's in the house. Please keep them in your prayers and help them go along with everything. In this name we pray, amen.